Marhaba shabab, it's Khalid here. Now in this video, I will teach you a very common Arabic culture phrase that you can use in a three different situations. Now when you start to use this phrase, you are going to demonstrate that you do understand the Arabic culture. And that will make a great first impression on a native Arabic speaker. So stay tuned. And the phrase is يعطيك العافية Again يعطيك العافية And that's if I am addressing a male And if I am addressing a female I have to change the ending in the first word يعطيك And make it يعطيكي So it becomes يعطيكي العافية Again يعطيكي العافية So if I am addressing a male, I would say يعطيك العافية And if I am addressing a female, I would say يعطيكي العافية Now let's break it down يعطيك means give you العافية the health Now together means give you the health يعطيك العافية Now I know it doesn't make sense to you how to use the phrase but let me give you a three scenarios uh, to see how we can use the phrase okay so the first scenario let's say now you are going uh, shopping or you're going to the market and you want to buy something and you entered the shop so you can start by saying يعطيك العافية يعطيك العافية and actually what you are saying here to the shopkeeper hello may God give you the health to continue what you are doing now you will notice that the shopkeeper will be pleased to hear that from you and also you may get a discount okay so that's the first use now the second use of يعطيك العافية uh, when you want to interrupt someone politely, okay? So you can say, um, يعطيك العافية بتعرف وين المحطة? Excuse me, do you know where is the station? So يعطيك العافية here uh, means uh, excuse me, okay? So يعطيك العافية بتعرف وين المحطة? Now the third use of يعطيك العافية when you want to leave so we can use it as a goodbye so let's say like you put everything you need and now you are leaving now you can say يعطيك العافية like goodbye مع السلامة okay now let's recap what we have learned in this video يعطيك العافية can be used in a three scenarios okay the first scenario when you enter the shop or when you are in the market and you want to greet the shopkeeper you can use this phrase يعطيك العافية It's like مرحبا okay? Now the second use When you want to interrupt someone politely You can start by saying يعطيك العافية And then you can ask a question you want to ask وين المحطة? Where is the station? And the last use When you want to leave And you want to say goodbye So you can say يعطيك العافية Okay? Now that's all for today and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel so we can keep you updated with all the videos we are making here. Hi guys, this is Umar speaking and today I will teach you a very important phrase in Arabic especially if you are actually like you know living in the Middle East right now or you're, you're gonna travel in the Middle East and um, and you are, you know, in a taxi driver or you are taking a taxi driver and the taxi is going fast and you want to tell him, slow down, please, then this video is going to be useful for you. As well, um, if you are learning Arabic and, uh, you know, you want to, like, you know, uh, tell your friend to slow down his speaking, this following phrase will be super useful for you. Okay, now here's the phrase. على مهلك 
على مهلك and this is for a man and it means slow down على مهلك now the in here is a throat letter so make sure you pronounce it correctly على مهلك now for a woman I say على مهلك على مهلك and the difference here actually is just the ending so ek referred to a feminine gender على مهلك okay and ak refers to a male gender okay so so far you learned how to say على مهلك that's for a man and for a woman على مهلك so Next time, if you, someone is speaking very fast in Arabic and you want to tell him or her to slow down, just say that phrase, ala mahlak. Or you're in a taxi driver, which is very, very common, um, just to warn you, for some reason, like, taxis in the Middle East are kind of like, you know, they think they are in rally uh, competitions, so they speed up in compared to London or to Europe. Okay, so that's why it's very important to tell the taxi driver to slow down. I hope guys you enjoyed this video and please make sure to subscribe because every Friday we will select one winner from our subscribers list and we will give him or her full access to our online training program, the Nasra Arabic Method. Marhaba, it's Khaled here. Now in this video, I'm going to teach you how to say in Arabic, good morning. So stay tuned. Now to say good morning in Arabic, sabah al khair. Sabah al khair. Sabah al khair. Now let's break it down. Sabah means morning. Al khair means good. So literally, I'm saying morning good. Sabah al khair. Now, to answer this, I would say Sabah al nur. Sabah al nur. Sabah al nur. Now, let's break it down. Sabah means morning. Al Nur means light. So literally, I'm saying here morning light. Sabah Al Nur. So if I were to tell you Sabah Al Khair, what would you say? Yes, Sabah Al Nur. And if you were to tell me Sabah Al Khair Khalid, I would respond back Sabah Al Nur. Hi guys, this is Omar speaking and today I will teach you how to say busy in Arabic. Mashi? Yalla. Now to say busy, I say Mashghul. Mashghul. And this is for a man. Now make sure you pronounce the Ghain correctly. Ghain is a throat letter in Arabic. So Mashghul. Mashghul. And for a woman, I say Mashghule. Mashghule. So what I did here, I just added the ending eh. So Mashghul. Mashghule. So the endings eh in Arabic refers to a feminine gender. The mom? Okay. Now let's have an example. I am busy tomorrow. أنا مشغول بكرة أنا مشغول بكرة أنا I مشغول busy بكرة tomorrow and this is for a man now for women I say أنا مشغولة بكرة أنا مشغولة 
Bukra. Now, again, I mentioned that in other videos, uh, we don't have the verb to be in Arabic. So, am, is, are, we don't have them. So, throw them from the window. So, what actually I'm saying here, I busy tomorrow. Tamam? I hope guys you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe because from now on every Friday we will choose one winner and we will give him or her full access to our online training program the Nasr Arabic method. Hi guys, this is Omar speaking and today I want to talk about very important um, subject which is the um, the difference between spoken Arabic and modern standard Arabic. Now it's very important to know differences and uh, like you know when to use uh, which one uh, because otherwise if you don't know differences you will be confused and you might uh, uh, take the wrong uh, direction to learn Arabic. Okay now first in this, this channel we are teaching Levantine Arabic okay and that uh, is a dialect spoken in Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and Palestine. Okay? So, in Arabic, we have uh, two types uh, of Arabic. So, we have spoken Arabic dialects, and then we have modern standard Arabic. Okay? Now, for spoken Arabic, we have three main dialects. So, we have the Levantine Arabic, and then we have Egyptian Arabic, which is spoken in Egypt. And then we have Gulf Arabic, which is spoken in the Gulf region and Saudi Arabia. Okay. Now dialects are useful when it comes to communications uh, with like your family, uh, with your colleagues, traveling, um, to uh, basically just to have casual conversation and just day-to-day -day life. Okay. Now modern standard Arabic, or we call it classical Arabic, uh, is mainly used. Uh, to read and write, uh, to read the Quran, to read the newspaper, to read literature books, and as well to give like some formal representation at work. Okay, so if your goal was to speak, which I know most students they want to speak first and build confidence in uh, in communication, then you must learn a dialect. Okay, either Levantine or Egyptian or Gulf. Okay, and don't worry, the three of them actually are really related. So. All you need just to focus in one dialect and be good at it. And then you understand the rest easily. So it's like if you are from London and you meet somebody from New York or Australia. That is the difference, guys. Okay? Um, now, if you learned modern standard Arabic and then you try to use it uh, and speak, uh, speak it with the uh, uh, native Arabic speaker, um, well, it's fine. They can understand you, of course. But there's a trick here because they will get back to you in their own dialects and you're going to get confused because you will see why he is this guy is speaking something different from me that's the first thing and as well you might get frustrated as well because uh, you will say like okay i want to learn a dial something i can use right now something like you know uh something like a uh, lively or uh, authentic and uh, real okay so as well if you actually speak uh, more than Arabic you will come across like Shakespeare speaking so you're gonna bit like kind of like a kind of like a wall between you and uh, the Arabic speaker um, and because it's just gonna be the only one who speak that like if someone came from you know uh, from the history or something like that okay so um, if you are absolute beginner then uh, my best advice to you to focus on one dialect Okay. Then after that, after like maybe six months or when you are good at that dialect, if you can learn more than Arabic and you can focus mainly on how to read the newspaper, the Quran, um, literature books. But this is the best way to learn Arabic. And uh, uh, at universities, uh, usually in London, like or like everywhere, when people uh, learn Arabic at a degree or students go and uh, learn Arabic. In the first year, there are more than like 100 students apply for learning Arabic. By the end of first year, uh, the, um, over 70% of students drop out. And the reason why? Because the teacher first focused mainly in 
modern standard Arabic on heavy grammars and rule. And, um, and then after like one year, when the students want to communicate with like, uh, somebody, they just say like, what, why I'm learning something I'm, I can't really use in communication as well. And as well, uh, there's lots of time spending on rule and grammars and that can make you bored, frustrated, and wants you to give up. That's why if you learn spoken Arabic, first you're gonna get excited and motivated because it's something you can use straight away. Um, the plus is actually more simple, guys. There's no like, you know, complexity in learning a dialect. It's the, way, the grammar is simple, it's easy going, and um, you will see progress within a few months of learning a dialect, okay? So it's the best choice for you guys, and uh, that's why um, like uh, I'm teaching mainly Levantine Arabic in this channel. Um, and I do believe it's one of the best dialect, best dialect to learn because it's light, it's clear, and... People Marhaba Shabab, it's Khaled here. Now in this video, I will share with you my personal opinion on when you should be studying grammar and how much you should be learning. Okay, so stay tuned. Now, if you are someone who have just started learning Arabic and you are absolutely beginner, then grammar shouldn't be your main priority. Instead, you should apply the 80-20 rules. Now, you might ask, what is the 80-20 rule? Well, let me explain how it works. So, at the early stages of your learning, you should put 80% of your focus on your speaking. So learning new vocabulary, learning new Arabic cultural phrases, and also how you can make simple and easy sentences. Then 20% of your focus should be on grammar. And this grammar has to be related to speaking. So for example, you should know how to replace the adjective and the nouns. Uh, you should know how to conjugate the verb, okay? And as you start to progress in your you know, learning and you start to feel more confident conversing to people around you, then you start to increase the percentage of learning grammar. So make it 30, 40, 50 until you reach the advanced level and now you start to make it main priorities. You start to put more focus on learning grammar. Okay. Now, the only exception you should be studying and putting heavy focus on grammar is when you want to pass the exam. If you want to pass the exam, then you should study a lot of grammar. But remember, that doesn't necessarily will make you a confident Arabic speaker. Now, this is my personal experience and this is how we have taught students over the last 10 years and also, this is how we build our online teaching method. My name is Hugo. I've been studying the Nasra method for six months now, um, and I've found it to be hugely effective for my, my learning needs. Um, I've studied a lot of internet-based methods for, for the Arabic language, and I've found that most of them focus on on fusha, on classical Arabic, and on heavy use of grammar. Uh, and I think that you very quickly become bewildered and lose interest in the language. The thing I really liked about the Nasra method is that it focuses on very practical, conversational uh, and cultural topics, um, throwing in grammar when it is necessary, but only when it's necessary. But really focusing on speed uh, of language and also uh, breadth of vocabulary. And for me, that's increased my, uh, my knowledge hugely uh, and I've actually seen the practical application on a daily basis. I use it uh, for work in the Middle East and North Africa uh, a lot uh, and it has been hugely helpful for me and really engaging. The videos are really good, bite-sized, and I can have them on my iPad or my phone uh, and watch them whenever to, to catch up with it. So I highly recommend it for anybody. Marhaba, it's me Hugo and I'm in Britannia. I'm going to study the language Arabic with the Nasra method for six months. آه لما بديت كان عندي مشاكل كثير بسرعة اللغة يعني ما كان عندي آه الثقة بالكلمات بس حلا عندي الثقة بأكثر من الكلمات بس بالثقافة كمان 
ولهذا عندي هلا ثقافة الفكة بالثقافة العالم العربي وكمان باللغة وهذا مهم كثير لي عشان أنا بسافر بالشرق الأوسط مع شغلي وكمان بالشمال إفريقيا واستخدم اللغة بشكل يومي. Hi, my name is Peter. I studied uh, Arabic with London Arabic tuition. My teacher was Omar. Um, when I first started, I uh, I'd always wanted to learn, but I, I didn't think I could. It just looked way too complicated. And uh, with London Arabic tuition, it, it wasn't. It was really simple. Uh, I feel confident now. I can speak to just about anybody. Um, and I would highly recommend it to uh, anyone who thought they might want to learn Arabic, because it really works. Uh, thank you. وهلا بالعربي. ببداية ما عرفت ولا شيء. يعني درست مع عمر بالبرنامج لندن عربي توشن. كنت كثير مبسوط مع الأستاذ مع البرنامج مع كل شيء وراح كنت كثير كثير منيح وهلا في عندي ثقة بنفسي ومع لغة و أنا بنصح أي واحد يعني بده يدرس اللغة العربية يدرس مع لندن عربي توشن. My name is Katerina. I chose the Nastra method because I wanted to learn Arabic um, in a quick way in a, uh, because I wanted to talk to my family's husband. Um, I noticed that after roughly six months I could already have um, some good communication with them. So I think the method is very successful, um, very easy. Uh, I was really surprised that Actually, learning Arabic is easy to compare, compare with other languages like, I don't know, German or French even. Um, I just would, li I would like to advise everybody else who wants to learn Arabic that it's possible, especially with the Nasra method. Um, good luck. Marhaba, I'm Katarina. I'm from Nimsa and I'm France. And now, I'm in London. زوجي اسمه أنس من سوريا ومشان هيك كان بدي يدرس عربي عندي اهتمام بثقافة وشكل أوسط اخترت يدرس مع نصرة ميتود لأنه طريقة التدريس كتير سهلة ومميزة وممتاز كمان و بتفرجيك إنه اللغة العربية مش صعبة وسهلة التعلم وكمان بتعطيك سئة بسرعة لتحكي مع الناس شكرا. Hi, in the past I studied modern standard Arabic and there was a focus on reading and writing and this was, it turned out to be a bit of a problem for me because the thing I was most interested in was travelling to the region and speaking to people. So I decided that I wanted to improve my level of spoken Arabic because modern standard Arabic is not used in everyday life in the Middle East. Um, and I would find that when I was speaking modern standard Arabic, people didn't well, they would, first of all, they'd respond in their own dialects, but they would find it quite amusing that I was speaking this language, which isn't really the day-to-day -day Arabic. So I found London Arabic tuition um, on Google, and I've been studying them with them for a year. I find their tuition to be very clear, it's not complex, and I really found in just a few lessons that I was able to express myself so much more clearly than I had done in the past and I would highly recommend them to anyone who wants to improve their level of spoken Arabic. Wahala bil Arabi, Anna Ismi Fadia, Anna Sakna bil London, Arib Ajur Road, Hala Anna Ambishtugil bil Nashar, Anna Dresset Lugha Fusha, Wa Anna Ken Biti Etalam il Lugha Amia Surya. Uh, فأنا لقيت uh, London Arabic tuition في Google uh, وهنا بركز uh, بالعميات وأنا درست معهم لمدة uh, سنة uh, المدرس ممتاز uh, وأنا حسيت حالي أن أتحسن بسرعة وهلا أنا عندي أكثر ثقة 
بالحكي وفهم الناس شكرا Hello, my name is Zaina and I live in London. I just completed my, mas my master's in uh, Near and Middle East Studies and I wanted to learn Arabic because I would like to use it in my field of work. I chose the Nasser method and I'm very pleased with it. I'm very happy with the um, program that uh, I learned Arabic and I believe it was very practical, geared towards my um, needs which were focused on more work, uh, on using Arabic for work. And I totally, definitely recommend um, the Nasser method for anyone who is serious about learning Arabic. Marhaba, it's me Zaina, wa sakni bi London. Ana sawayt magister bi dirasa shaq al awsat. Mishan hek ararat adrus al lugha al Arabiya, la ano bidi stamil al Arabiya bi al majal shagli. Fa akhtarat adrus ma Nasser method. أنا كثير مبسوطة مع هذا البرنامج لأنه طريقة التدريس كثير عملية وبتركز على أشياء يلي بساعدني بشغلي أنا بنسى كل واحد بده يتعلم اللغة العربية يستعمل The Nasser Method